I'm Mark Sheriff, and welcome to my gaming tree. I was trying to make a gaming tree. I mean, I like my logo and all that, but you know, figure I had to do something with all these boxes. You know, make an actual gaming tree. I hope you are having a wonderful day, and I hope that you got to see episode zero, and I'm still working on how all this is going to look and how it's all going to work out. So if you have any thoughts or any suggestions, you can email me at profsheriff, P-R-O-F-S-H-E-R-R-I-F-F -F at gmail.com, and love to hear what you think. Well, what I want to talk about today is to follow up on what I talked about in episode zero about what makes a game. And what I talked about there was the idea that games have rules, feedback, um, voluntary participation, and goals, okay? So um, every game can be defined by those things, that there's a goal that you're trying to achieve, there are rules that limit your actions within the environment in order to um, force you to uh, overcome those unnecessary obstacles, if you remember that definition, and then the feedback gives you um, that, that incentive to keep going. So what I was thinking I would do today is play a game and talk about what that actually looks like. So today I'm going to do um, probably the quintessential first level ever with good old Super Mario Brothers. So first, let's stop right there. Now, um, this has been uh evaluated and analyzed many 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 times and there's lots of great videos and lots of great blog posts out there you can get even more information on this so i'm going to talk about level one one in the context of some of what's out there but also in the context of goals rules feedback and voluntary participation let's go ahead and just say for voluntary participation i'm excited about playing super mario uh, brothers and so yeah i'm all in on this so let's talk about goals as of right now, uh, I don't have a goal. Um, if you look at the screen, you know, I have Mario there on the left-hand side. I have a wide open space to the right. Talk about the idea of affordances here, or the idea that there is possibility over to the right. Um, there is nothing hindering me. It's open blue sky. Um, it looks like it's beckoning me to go that way. Mario is pointing to the right. But other than that, there's no real goal yet. The goal doesn't really occur in Super Mario Brothers until after you've beaten 1-4. Level 1-4 when, congratulations, but our princess is in another castle. And so then that starts kicking off the idea that you need to move from one level to the next. So the overarching goal of Super Mario Brothers doesn't really come out until then, other than if you read the manual, which, I mean, if you were a child of the 80s or late 70s, in my case, you read the manual because that was half the fun on the way home from you know, Toys R Us or KB Toys or wherever. Um, but the only immediate goal that I have right now is I, I need to move that ticker from 1-1 one, one to 1-2. One, so right now I don't really have any idea of what the rules are. So when I start the game, maybe I move left and I notice I can't move left any further. So as soon as that happens, we see that, okay, Mario's movement is going to be pointed to the right. So that's the first rule that the world gives us. Another rule that the world gives us is in the upper right hand corner, you can see the time has gone down from 400 to 390, um, indicating that there is a limited amount of time in order to complete this. So already I've got a little bit of information. So I start moving to the right, and as soon as I hit the middle of the screen, the screen moved. Basically telling me, okay, now you've picked the right direction, now the camera is focused on you. If I try to go back to the left, I can't go any further. The rule now is, once you have completed an area of the level, you're not allowed to go back to it. You have to continue moving forward. All right, so I'll keep moving forward, and we have the quintessential question mark block. Um, without knowing much about the question mark block at this point, if you've never played it, you, you see this flashing thing. There's already this kind of response, human response. I want to know what it is. I want to know what's going on. And then we have our first enemy coming in to the screen. Now, one thing that should hopefully immediately tell you something is not great about this guy is the furrowed brow. The furrowed brow telling you that this is a bad guy. This is someone that is going to have a, have a problem with you. Now, you might not necessarily know not to walk into it, so the first time you do, maybe you do. And that's a learning experience that many players need to have. And they now know that when your sprite contacts another moving sprite, potentially a bad moving sprite, something that looks dangerous, on the side, 
then you lose a life. The sound, do, 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 the, the, the falling up and down, the go to black screen, the go back here, that is all form of feedback that has informed you of a rule of the game. I now know not to run into that sprite. Now watch as I'm moving forward here, if I have experimented with controls and I try and jump over him, okay, I, I missed the jump, but the timing there is specifically so that when the mushroom, when, when the Goomba is moving underneath the block, I theoretically am pressing A to jump, forcing me to hit my head against that question mark block, showing me that form of feedback. I hit the question mark block, there is that delightful coin sound, the coin comes out of the block, that's another form of feedback. At the top of the screen, we see the coin indicator is gone up from zero, zero to zero, one, more feedback, okay? So now I've hit one block, I need another taste of this, this is amazing. So now we have more question marks, I gotta get, gotta get these. <gasps> That's not a coin. Now, as I hit it, the mushroom comes up and it's moving. Is it good, is it bad? I don't know. Now notice that when it hits here, it falls. We now know gravity applies not only to my character, but also applies to moving objects. Now, this pipe over here is intentionally placed because it forces the mushroom back and because of the height of the blocks there, even if I tried to jump over it, I probably would hit my head and land on the mushroom. This is all intentional. This shows you that when you hit this particular item, you become big and there is a positive feedback. There's the sound, the Mario gets bigger. If I try to jump now, I see I can break blocks. And now I have learned something new about the game. So I move forward and I jump over a small pipe. Wait, this one's a little bit bigger. So now I know I have to hold the A button down a little bit longer. Hey, bad guy. Maybe now I learn I, I can try jumping on it. Now notice this pipe is even higher. So we have three pipes that grow successively bigger every single time. That is showing you that if I tap the button, I get one height, if I hold it longer, I get another height. If I hold it all the way down, I get another height. Only if I hold down A to its maximum height from a standing jump can I get over that pipe. So in just three pipes, um, Miyamoto-san has shown us what is Mario's jump capability? Now we have two enemies, which we get past. Now, anyone who's played Super Mario Brothers more than one time immediately hits down when you hit this pipe because they know that uh, there is a bonus here. Um, but your average player doesn't know that, and the average player doesn't know that you can go down the pipe. So the other thing about this is if I was to go down this pipe, notice that if those of you who played Super Mario Brothers, you know that when you go down this pipe, you get some coins, but that you exit at the end of the level. This is something that we do in human computer interaction in um, all sorts of software, which is to provide a shortcut for expert users. So the same thing as when you do swipe with typing, where you can quickly make a word or text replace, you, you put in like if I type in um, FL, it completes the food lion or, or something like that, some text expander sort of things, um, or any sort of hotkey combination that you might program into some programs you use like uh, Photoshop or something like that. We want to put in affordances into programs that expert users can do so that they can do things quicker. And this is the exact same idea, except in a video game. Anyone who's coming back to Super Mario Brothers doesn't need to play all of World 1-1. They want to skip right to the end. They want to go to World 1-2, where in World 1-2, we know that there is a warp zone to Worlds 2, 3, and 4, basically allowing the expert user to move to the next part of the game so that they can do what they want to do. So I'm not going to go down the pipe here. And the extra life that is right here, right there, um, probably won't get be picked up by most users as well, uh, just because they don't necessarily know it. But if they're jumping around, they might hit it. And then they get a nice um, explanation of what a hidden block does. So again, we have something here that you don't actually find a ton of in Super Mario Brothers throughout the entire game, the idea that you have these hidden blocks. But to have one within the first little bit of the game shows you that this is a rule that you need to know. Now we also have the first pit. It's a very simple pit. Jump over, a standing Mario can do it without any issue. Here's where you first learn that you can kill Goombas by hitting from up below them, just by a natural jumping motion. Um, the Goomba is there right when you are getting there. 
allowing you to do that, and then getting the next power up. It's enticing, you get it, and um, if you're pressing buttons just as, as you pick things up, um, the Fire Flower is explained in the manual, so theoretically, kids who uh, picked this up for the first time in, in the early 80s would see the Fire Flower, get very excited, start just you know jamming on that B button to shoot anything that they could. So now the level gets slightly more interesting, and we get our first instance of a multi-coin block, which has up to 10 coins in it if you hit it fast enough. Um, most new players, once they become Super Mario, want to start smashing basically every, every block they can find. And here, um, the game is showing you, wait, some blocks you don't can't smash, they actually have things in them. And so you see that again right here, where we get another power-up. Look, we're only partway through the first level, and we have... We had the mushroom, we've had a hidden block, we've had a pipe that you'll eventually learn about. We have the star right here. This is a pretty high density of items for the amount of time you've actually played the game. And part of this is kind of working through the manual in a sense to show you all of the things that you can find um, as soon as possible so that you can learn what they do. So we see that we're flashing. There's two enemies I immediately can run into. And because of the pattern of those blocks there, I could potentially have jumped over them, but it is also kind of forcing me to run into them, in a sense, um, so that you see what the star does. Um, we go through all those. We now have another example jump. Now this jump has no consequences, right? Because I go up this, the stairs, there's a hole, but if I fall down here, you know, no harm, no foul. But now we have another one. Notice this time it gives me two blocks of space between uh, on the left hand side before going to the right hand side, which gives you a little bit more room to get up a little bit of speed before making your first jump. We have the pipe where we came out at the end, the last pipe, and now we get the two block running start again. This is um, the game showing us that, hey, it's okay to jump off of this, these two blocks are here for you to make the motion to get up and over it. You jump, and for the first time you see the flagpole. Um, I shouldn't have done a running jump there to show that you know you you land down there and then you see what the flagpole is and you jump into it. So that's World One One. World One One is a absolute masterclass uh, in in what you want a first level to be. The purpose of a first level of any game is to explain on some level what are your goals, what are the basic rules of the game, and how is the game gonna provide you feedback. So in 1-1 one, one here, we not only saw the rules of uh, interacting with uh, NPCs, with non-player characters, with bad guys, we saw rules about how most of the major items of the, all of the major items of the game work, Fire Flower and Star, this is Super Mario Brothers 1, we don't have a ton else to work with here. Um, how different types of blocks work. We had a multi-coin block, we had the uh, question mark block, we had the, we had the hidden block with the, the one up if you knew to jump for it there. Um, and we had the introduction of how the different types of jumps work, um, all in, a, in an environment we, where you aren't really threatened. I mean, there are enemies, but in general, you have the ability to explore here before you then come and then you hit the, the flagpole for the first time. So I hope that that, that gives you some idea of what it, what it means to think about the, the, the goals, the rules, and the feedback of a game uh, and how you want to go about communicating that to your players. So if you're designing your own game, if you, you know, are in part of a game club or you're doing this just for fun, think about that. How are you communicating those, those rules to people? I think we can all think of games that we've played where we think, oh my gosh, this tutorial is eternally long and, and I'm going through it, I'm going through it and you're telling me more and more things. I don't know what I was going The best games are those where you organically are learning the rules as you are playing the game and it doesn't feel like a chore that you're going through. So think about that. I'll come back to this lesson again in the next video, probably looking at Super Mario Brothers 2 and 3 to see how this has changed. Um, because if you go to look at Mario Brothers 3's World 1-1, it's pretty different to how that introduces the rules to what Super Mario Brothers 1-1 does. So that's something hopefully you can look forward to. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I'm gonna keep trying to put these together. Uh, and if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Thanks for hanging out with me and I hope to see you again another time. 
underneath my gaming tree. Bye.